Welcome to the Devil's Digest Week 6 Game Preview. Arizona State is back home to host number 21 Washington. And for a change, this will be a Saturday afternoon game with a 1 p.m. kickoff at Sun Devil Stadium. I'm Nick Borgia, alongside our publisher, Hode Urbino. And Hode, halting a four-game skid is at the top of the to-do list for the Arizona State team, but also the fact this is the last game before the bye week probably puts even more importance on this contest. Hey, absolutely right, Nick, because I feel that this is a team that's just seeking to gain confidence. And sure, we hear the players and the coaches feel that there was improvement between the Eastern Michigan game and the Utah game, the Utah game in the in the USC contest. And, I, and I'm not uh, really disparaging those comments at all. I think we definitely did see gradual, slow progression, perhaps, but definitely some kind of progression from from week to week since Sean Aguano has, has been named the interim head coach. But ultimately, you have to put some games in, in, in the win column. And ASU obviously has not been in that column since the season opener against FCS opponent Northern Arizona. So you definitely want to go into the bye week with some kind of pep in your step, if you will, feeling that now the confidence has really materialized to results on, on the field. And I always say that when you have an extra week to stew in the juices of despair, if you will, and that's what a loss right before the bye week would do for you, then uh, that's something that maybe can give you that quote unquote hangover for that first game after the bye week. And we've seen cases where Arizona State has really come out flat um, I, I'm out of a bye week. Maybe sometimes it's because of a loss in the uh, two weeks before. Maybe it's for other reasons. But uh, nonetheless, uh, this is a team right now that is looking for any reason to feel re really, really good about itself. And a win, especially before the bye week, I think it really do wonders for the last six uh, games in the 2022 season. Well, if we talk about last week at USC, the offense played a pretty solid first half of football, but really faltered in that second half. And even though Washington is having a great season, their defensive numbers are probably not as great as you'd expect for a top 25 team. Yeah, especially when you look at the at the secondary. I mean, this really has been known as a DBU uh, program, uh, uh, churning out uh, just quality defensive backs year in and year out. You get, you don't have to look uh, too far than uh, your, your own backyard over here with the Arizona Cardinals, Buda Baker and Byron Murphy, uh, both players that uh, played for University of Washington and played very, very well in the not too recent past. Uh, but right now you're looking at a secondary, which does yield on average over 233 yards. It's not a horrible stat, especially when you, when you think about a pass happy Pac-12 conference. But nonetheless, when you look at the standards that this Husky program has really established uh, for, I would say, the last decade or so. Uh, th these are numbers that are definitely eye-opening for all the wrong reasons uh, if, if, if you're a fan of the Huskies. So Arizona State with a passing game that has not been consistent, but really has been showing uh, some signs of life uh, in the, the last couple of weeks. I think this is a game that even compared to a team like USC last, last uh, week, really uh, provides an opportunity to, uh, to, to get the passing game going. We saw, we saw Brian Thompson have a breakout game uh, last week uh, at USC. We know that Elijah Badger uh, has been the featured uh, wide receiver almost every week, and he, he's, he's playing at a uh, pretty high level. Uh, we saw good utilization uh, from the running backs, Xavier Valde and, and Daniel Ngata in the passing game. We're still waiting for Messiah Swinson, the tight end, and Jalen Conyers, his fellow tight end for that matter, to really be more and more part of the passing game, but uh, I think that Washington really, in that regard, uh, does offer a lot of opportunities for this passing game to maybe have its best um, outing of the season. Obviously, uh, it definitely struggled against uh, UCLA in the loss in the Rose Bowl last week. And I don't think that uh, overall, the quality of uh, wide receivers or aerial targets for the Bruins is head and shoulders above that of Arizona State. They just need an opportunity to, uh, to really to really break out. And again, I feel, feel the Huskies to really provide that opportunity. When you look at the run defense uh, for the Huskies, uh, definitely more stingy, uh, uh, yielding just an average of 108 yards. But uh, I feel that uh, it really was a disappointing performance uh, for, the, for the ASU ground attack because they faced uh, one of the worst run defenses last week in USC that on average was yielding 100, 170 yards. And uh, ASU uh, was able to muster um, under 100 yards and really had a hard time in the second half getting anything uh, going on the ground. Uh, granted, uh, when your quarterback, Emory Jones, is sacked five times uh, in the last two quarters, uh, that definitely affects the rushing numbers uh, quite a bit. But uh, this is uh, a defense that 
maybe more maybe would be more stingy in that regard but uh, nonetheless i think that uh not a defense that should be so, so daunting that this uh asu uh, running game which really has been playing fairly well i would say on average for the first five games uh can really uh exploit some shortcomings over there with washington so overall even though this is a team that's ranked in the top 25 uh, has only lost one game on the year uh there are definitely some areas that i feel asu can and has to exploit come saturday and if we talk about asu's defense there's no doubt that they've been struggling in this four game losing streak and even though yielding just over 28 points and 225 passing yards on average are not great stats by any means asu would love to record those kinds of figures against a high-powered washington offense yeah absolutely nick i mean you look at the numbers that washington is producing they're absolutely scary over 360 uh, 364 yards uh passing 142 yards rushing if that's not a balanced offense, I don't, I don't know what is. And you can argue that maybe uh, this offense, not that it was really halted against UCLA, but compared to all the opponents that Washington played prior to the Bruins, this is definitely by far the toughest uh, team that, that they did face. UCLA, uh, ironically, uh, uh, vaulted into the top 25 after that win against Washington. So some kind of wondering that maybe this offense, much like the defense for Washington has somewhat uh, got, got exposed uh, when they did face a good defense. But uh, one thing that Arizona State has been lacking and maybe showed us the little signs of life in that area well, has been the pass rush, has been really pressuring the opposing quarterback. When you saw they did that, did that well, they were really able to stop Washington. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if you want to put too much stock in what uh, the UCLA defense was able to do to disrupt the Washington offense, because again, I think the caliber of opponents when you look at Washington's schedule, there's almost been night and day between the games played prior to UCLA and the UCLA contest itself. But uh, if ASU can really disrupt uh, Michael, Michael Penix, who I think is one of the best transfer quarterbacks into the league in 2022, if they really can uh, slow him down and maybe have Washington try to rely more on its ground attack, which again, has not been horrible, but I also, also think that by and large has really benefited from, from such a, a potent passing attack. I think this defense for ASU um, might might have a chance uh, to do something because a lot of people are talking about the secondary, how how much an experience there is over there, and I'm not disputing that. And you know, when you have some players like Demarcus Davis, who I don't think we're playing at the level everybody expected them to, but it goes without saying, and this is really football 101, that sometimes the secondary is only as good as the pressure that the front four, really the the, the front seven, can put on an opposing quarterback. And if ASU can really have a much better effort in that department come Saturday. I think they really can disrupt uh, the Washington uh, offense uh, quite a bit, but make no, no, no mistake about, about this. Uh, just like the UC offense last week and really the Utah offense two weeks ago, this is going to be one hell of a task for the ASU defense to contend with. And it's anyone's guess if Washington's first loss of the year to UCLA, which you mentioned, if that will have an adverse effect on the team. But do you think this is actually an aspect that can make a difference come Saturday? I think that maybe to some extent it, it really can because uh, even though coaches and players uh, will give you the uh, public persona, if you will, that they're not invincible, that just because they're undefeated and ranked number 15, that they feel that they still have some work to do. Uh, sometimes they kind of wonder like be behind closed doors if they just uh, maybe have that, that, that overconfidence. And um, you know, some, some people, even outside of the Washington circle last week, thought that maybe UCLA's uh, undefeated record was a mirage and uh, the Washington was, go was going to expose them. Really, the opposite uh, happened. So now you have Washington, which, you know, yes, they do have one extra day of rest uh, because they did play on Friday of last week. But uh, nonetheless, back-to-back uh, -back pretty long road trips uh, for, for the Huskies. And now, um, you know, being humbled somewhat after the loss of UCLA, you kind of wonder what, what, what their team's psyche is. I'm not saying they're absolutely demoralized or deflated, but uh, I think that their confidence really has been hampered. We also talk about the fact that uh, it is going to be a rare early October afternoon game. And granted, it's not going to be triple digits at kickoff or when the game ends. But uh, nonetheless, I think it's going to be plenty warm to really create a climate, no pun intended, that Arizona State would feel, you think, on paper, much more comfortable than Washington in, in, in playing, in playing the, uh, under those conditions. And look, I mean, sometimes you don't want to really read too much in history because there have been so many uh, different coaches and different players that have changed since 2001 until now. But 
2001 was the last year that Washington actually beat Arizona State in Tempe. And overall, this is a program that, you know, granted, there have been a lot of years where they just skipped each other because of the north-south rotation, which, uh, you know, is a thing of the past in the Pac-12. Who knows what that's going to look like moving forward. But nonetheless, uh, ASU almost every year has really had Washington's number, no matter if Washington is ranked or, or ASU is struggling. So I think there really are some elements that may be off the field, more on the field, that can really uh, affect uh, Washington uh, in, in this contest. So I think Arizona State, and this may be a little more a gut feel than it actually X's and O's prediction, but I, I think Arizona State uh, can uh, deliver for you, Nick, a belated uh, uh, birthday present. I know your birthday is today, but uh, on Saturday, uh, Arizona State, I think it just squeak out a win, 27 to 24. And what you mentioned about 2001 being the last time Washington won against Arizona State, that's the year I was born. That's a long time ago. So <laughs> anyways, thank you so much, Ode, for all of your coverage leading up to Saturday's contest, as well as updates and analysis from Saturday's game. Keep it locked in right here at Devil's Digest. For Hoderbino, I'm Nick Borgia. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you Saturday.